The beauty, the performance and the new standard, the all new Dell XPS 9315 is here. This laptop is strategically placed in between the Dell XPS 13 Plus which costs a lot of money and the older generation Dell XPS 11 Gen Evo certification itself. This laptop is for someone who is looking a small yet a powerful machine. Not to mention the premium look of this laptop will attract anyone you open it in front of them. So ladies and gentlemen, the all new Dell XPS 9315 is here and I want to talk the good, the bad and the beauty of this laptop. Let me just get on to the first one and that is the good of this. Talking about the good things, let me just get on to the design of this. On the back we have the Dell logo embossed in a premium aluminium design with a 13 inches of beautifully small laptop. If you take a look on the sides, it is tapered, wedge shaped with no cutouts for the ports. We'll be talking about the connectivity in the later part so stay tuned for that. When you open it up, this can be opened with one hand and the only thing that you will tell after opening this laptop is whoa what a display this is the screen is infinity edge display which has very much thin bezels and when you play a full-fledged video on it you get really immersed into the experience itself we'll be talking more about the display in the display section i just want you to hold on for this video with very small bezels the top part houses the ir camera and the blaster with 720p webcam as well it is decently good i liked it moving a little bit down you have full size keyboard with no numpad beautifully laid out it has good amount of spacing decent key travel speaking about the trackpad for the first time i did like the trackpad on a windows machine it is good responsive and the clicks are really amazing let me just get on to the next one and that is the build quality of this the whole laptop is made out of pure aluminium which impressed me the most i have two things to tell about this casing itself it is good for heat dissipation and it makes the laptop really strong and sturdy it really feels complete when you hold it in hand it is not like any flimsy laptop you are holding in hand that is why the build quality of this laptop gets 9 on 10 in my review itself. Apart from that, there is no keyboard flex or the top lid flex. There is no screen wobbling as well. For the first time ever, there is no screen wobbling on a Windows machine. That is really a good improvement. Reminds me of one of those MacBooks. I can keep talking about all the different materials that they have used on the hinges and around the screen as well. That really gives a different kind of texture to this laptop. Not to mention the keyboard also uses the same material itself. Let me just get on to the next one and that is the display of this. I just have one thought about this display. Amazing! It is not only the fact that it has an infinite edge display. Apart from being an LCD display, the, the max peak brightness can touch up to 500 nits. How cool is that? It is really good for the outdoor environment and the matte finish on the screen is also being compensated with the higher amount of brightness itself. And here are the actual specs of the display itself. For the display, we have 1920 by 1200 pixels which sums up to 16 is to 10 aspect ratio, anti-glare, infinite edge display with the max peak brightness hitting up to 500 nits with wide viewing angle this is really a good display i did try to edit some videos on this screen and the colors are somewhat accurate i cannot say it is 100 percent color accurate but it is almost there almost there let me just get on to the next one and that is the performance and specifications of this here is where the good ends and the bad begins let me just talk about it for the processor we have core i5 12th generation 1230u which is 10 core 12 threaded insanely fast cpu but it is efficient cpu as well the base clock frequency is 1 gigahertz because it is a u class processor the base frequency is going to be very less it can turbo up to 4.4 gigahertz forget about 4.4 it is not even going to touch 3 gigahertz in my opinion because i did not even able to cross the 2.8 gigahertz mark 4.4 gigahertz is a dream just forget it for the ram we have 16 gb lpddr5 5200 megahertz what can i say about this insanely fast rams it will get all your work done in the blink of an eye really fast and insanely fast the ddr5 rams are for the storage we have 512 of nvme m.2 ssd this is with the gen 3 capabilities which will get most of your work done this is not for content creators so obviously gen 3 is really sufficient for you the read write speeds are on your screen right now please do take a look Moving ahead for the graphic card, we have integrated Intel Iris Xe graphic card which is really good in my opinion. Compared to the UHD, the Intel Iris Xe are really amazing. It has an 8GB of shared memory which is shared between the RAM and the GPU as well. Looking at all of these specs, you might be wondering how the real world performance is. 
let me tell you it is really good because for the kind of people it is intended to give it is really an amazing laptop let me just tell you let me just talk about the different side of this performance itself now when i was testing this laptop i did test the cinebench r20 score in the best case i was able to get 2900 as the cinebench score which is really awesome in my opinion and in the worst case when it is thermal throttling and the fan is pushed to its limits i was only able to get 1600 1600 is the score i got and you know what was the clock speed during the first testing? During the first testing, it was around 2.6 to 2.7 gigahertz. And when I was testing it under pressure modes after using it for long hours and then testing the cinemage, the clock speeds had dropped to 1.6 gigahertz itself. That is one gigahertz less and that is why we are getting around the thousand point difference in this uh, processor itself. Now you just imagine if I can manage this CPU to push to the 4.4 gigahertz, what will be the performance that I would be getting? Nearly double of what we have seen today, right? That is not possible unfortunately because we are using a U class of processor which is power efficient processor itself. For more consistent result, I did test the Cinebench R23 score and I got a score of 5700 which is okay in my opinion considering the R20 score the R23 scores are really averages in my opinion itself. This numbers just give you an idea of how the laptop would handle in under pressure modes. Apart from that, this is really amazing top notch laptop you can get in the market right now. I tried video editing as well, which performance was really good. Screen gets really bright enough for all the daylight conditions and is somewhat color accurate as well. I did have good experience editing a 1080p 60fps video, but there was some frame drops as well. That's everything that you need to know about the performance of this. Let me just get on to the next one and that is the battery of this. I don't want you to bore with the numbers of the battery, I'll just put it in the description. Please do go ahead check that as well. I was able to charge this laptop in and around 30 or 40 minutes to 100% and I was able to use it for a complete day. Not to mention I was editing the video, browsing the web, testing different uh, softwares, running cinebenches. Even after that, I was able to use it for let us say around 7 to 8 hours on the regular usage. I did edit videos for 10 or 15 minutes which dropped the battery about 10 to 15 percent. The battery life easily gets around 8 to 10 hours in your normal usage so you don't have to worry about the battery life. Just plug it in once, throw the charger away and you can carry it anywhere you want. The portability is the key aspect of using such machines itself. We did talk about the good, the bad, now it's time for the beauty. The laptop is so and so beautiful that I took it outside and every single person noticed it. How cool this laptop is, how small this laptop is. Is that the sky blue color, the new sky blue color which the Dell has launched? Really premium looking laptop with so much so attention I could able to grab. Not to mention the speaker quality of this is really good. How beautiful the sound is, how immersive the sound is. There is no uh, visibly able to see the speaker grills because they are down firing 4 watt into 2 speakers. Really good in my opinion. The beauty of this laptop also lies in the display itself. The infinite edge display playing a 4K video at full resolution and full brightness was easily a immersive experience into the whole uh, ecosystem itself. For the ports, we have just two of them, two Thunderbolt ports on either side of the laptop, nothing else on the laptop. You cannot put any headphone jack, no SD card reader, USB. The laptop is not even thick to house an USB cable itself. So slim the laptop is. How can you even think of that? Uh, apart from this, there is an inclusion in the box itself. In the box, you do get the USB-C to A converter and C to headphone jack converter as well. That is really good. If you want to plug in the accessories, you already have them included in the box. Not like an Apple product, which does not include anything and we have to get everything externally in the accessories section itself. Catch you guys in the next one. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe. And if you have not hit that subscribe button, you should consider hitting it because we bring some amazing content and you don't want to miss it. Catch you guys in the 